The current stay-at-home order expires in just one week. Today, Governor Jay Inslee said parts of that order will have to be extended. We all have to realize that we are a long ways from the end of this virus, and we are going to have to maintain uh, plenty of restrictions after May 4th. Inslee says the state has to reach certain benchmarks before restrictions can be lifted. So here they are. First, the governor wants to see a consistent reduction in the number of coronavirus deaths and infections. That appears to be happening. But he also says sufficient testing and a contact tracing system to identify and isolate patients need to be in place. And we don't have those yet. But, and here's the good news, the governor did say we can go back to enjoying some popular outdoor activities. Olympia Bureau Chief Drew Mickelson is joining us live with what's going to open and when. Drew. Well, Mark, we've got some great news for fishing fans, folks who've been dying to get back on the water, hikers, golfers as well. All of those activities are about to be legal again. Late this afternoon, the governor announced several public recreational reopenings will be effective next Tuesday May 5th. That will include state parks, fishing, hunting, hiking trails, and golf courses. Overnight camping and team sports, large events, those still cannot happen. Now, folks will still have to practice social distancing. For example, when the state trails do reopen, the governor says folks should wear masks and give others as much space as possible on those trails. He knows anglers want to get out on the water, but he says you can't go out with your fishing buddies. Only immediate family members can be on your boat. While the governor is glad to loosen some restrictions, he says this should not be viewed as a return to normal. This is not the time to give up on the strategies that we know are giving us results, saving lives in the state of Washington. And I'm confident that Washingtonians who love the outdoors as much as I do are going to do a good job maintaining social distance even when we're outside. The governor says if we were to see a sharp increase in cases, these loosening restrictions could, e could easily be tightened back up. He's hoping that will not be the case. As for other elements of society reopening, he did say they're still working on trying to get some elective surgeries done at hospitals, but that was the only sort of sense of, of what else could be coming. He was not offering any other predictions for the future. Live in Olympia, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. Drew, thank you. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the governors of Washington, Oregon, and California agreeing to work together when it comes to reopening their states. Well, today, the governors of Colorado and Nevada joined that Western Pact. Leaders say they will continue to make the best decisions for their states, but they'll also discuss what is best for the region as a whole. Well, some heartbreaking new totals of the global impact of this pandemic. Johns Hopkins University is tracking all of the cases around the world. So just take a look at the numbers that they have now. Cases now topping 3 million globally. And here in the United States, we have nearly a third of those cases as we inch closer to the 1 million milestone. Over the past two weeks, the Kent School District turned away some hungry kids because they simply ran out of free meals. King 5's Natalie Swaby has been digging into what went wrong and was there to see if things were fixed today. It was a little bit um, frustrating. Mom Kim Wells has two students in the Kent School District and is a PTA president. She says the past couple of Mondays when free meals were distributed, it's resulted in long lines with food running out and families turned away. On April 13th, she was denied at three different sites. And the third site that we visited was one of the community sites. Um, and they actually ran out of food before it was even supposed to open because of all the overflow. What she and so many others wanted was one of these boxes filled with five breakfast meals and five lunches. Well, we've had a lot of challenges with COVID-19. During a school board meeting, the district acknowledged demand is up. Since mid-March, more than 168,000 meals have been distributed. But after shortages two weeks in a row, this Monday, the number of meals was increased. It was a little bit more um, effective and successful. It looks like from what I'm seeing, um, more of the sites didn't run out. It doesn't sound like they turned anybody away. Brenda Farwell with Kent Community Foundation says Kent School District is the fifth largest school district in the state, the 10th most diverse in the country. To assume that everybody has a computer, that everybody has access to internet is unrealistic in a community like Kent. 
She says community groups are helping too. You see the efforts in these pictures and at this restaurant. We did hear that uh, and what we want to do is stand in the gap and be, uh, be there for the families that are in need. We've been offering free meals here for the school kids and stuff in the Kent School District and stuff and uh, we've been doing it for about four weeks now. They've provided 1,400 meals to date and Kim is among the parents volunteering too. 110 you delivered today. She offered this thank you post, saying the district's meal distribution today was a noticeable improvement. In Kent, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. I was just so scared. It's, 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 it's contracted so easily, and I was just so worried that he was going to get it. Tonight in a King 5 exclusive, we are speaking with a Tacoma nurse who was worried that she might bring coronavirus home from her job. And that is just what happened. And now her husband is on a ventilator. And she spoke with our King 5's Ted Land. We're going to have their story coming up at 6.30 tonight.